amazing. When I say black lives, you say what? Black lives. Black lives. Black lives. We gonna be all right. Okay, next we have Robin. If you wanna come on up. People hear me okay? Um, first off, I wanted to thank the organizers for this uh, much needed event <laughs> and, um, and send love to our brothers and sisters in Toronto uh, right now who are holding down. Black life has been devalued in this country since its inception on stolen Indigenous land and since the slave trade in the 1600s including here in Montreal, anti-blackness has been part of how this country operates and is central to how Canada operates today. Is this better? Um, so we're here today to stand in solidarity with Black Lives Matter Toronto, who are laying down their bodies to protect black life and fight for survival and resilience of black communities. In Montreal here, we have the second largest black population in Canada. And as we're here to support Black Lives Matter in Toronto, we also need to assert that our black lives right here in Montreal matter too. Because black lives in Montreal are no safer. I thought that I would start by speaking today with a sample of uh, playing tribute to some black persons that were killed in Montreal by the police. Anthony Griffin was killed in 1987 um, by the Montreal police. He had an outstanding warrant and as he reached the police station, he ran away. The police yelled at him to stop and he did not and he was shot in the back of the head. Shortly after, Montreal's black community found out that the police had been placing pictures of black people over top of their targets for shooting practice. In April 9th, 1990, Leslie Presley, a 26-year-old black man was killed. A Jamaican who was ki uh, who was shot six times by three police agents at a downtown bar. Marcellus Francois, uh, another Jamaican, 24 years old, was killed by the police, who was killed by the bullet of an M16, though he was unarmed. Again, no charges were laid. Osmond Seymour Fletcher, in 1991, uh, a 26-year-old Jamaican man, was killed by a police bullet. Trevor Kelly in 1993, a 43-year-old black man, was shot in the back by Agent R Richard Mass. Kilem Registre was killed by the Montreal police on the 4th of October in 2007. 39 years old, he ran a stop sign and smashed into a parked car. The police subdued him using a, tater, a taser and he died four days later. These are just some examples of the horrific devaluation of black life uh, when our deaths can occur without any recourse for those who are supposedly to protect, here to protect society. But law enforcement has never protected black persons in Canada. Anti-blackness in Montreal is more than people killed by the police. State, van state violence is rampant in all parts of our lives. And also it's important to note, especially in the context of a Black Lives Matter movement, that racial profiling and police violence does not only target men. The devaluation of black women's lives the demonization of black women who are harmed by the police and many other forms of state violence need to also be centered in the way that we understand anti-black racism. When we erase racial profiling faced by black cis and transgender women, we are part of the silence that allows it to keep happening. Our outrage cannot only be mobilized on behalf of black men, but of black women as well because it's not just racism, but patriarchy, which harms black women. So I wanted to name and pay respect to uh, two black women in Canada, one of whom in Montreal that have been harmed by the police. Stacey Bonds was violently strip searched in Ottawa and left half naked in her cell for hours. In a very rare situation, the officer was charged with sexual assault. And this is a 
very likely because the incident was caught on camera. Majiza Philip, a Montreal black woman, a chef and a dance instructor, was out celebrating her 26th birthday. I'm sure you're familiar with this case in 2014. Hi. I'm here. <laughs> Great. Well, I want to pay respect to your Guys. situation as well. Uh, that's it. If you want to... Go on, go on. Yeah. And handcuffed, and brought to, the, brought to the station in handcuffs and interrogated, and charged with assaulting two officers, obstructing justice, and resisting arrest. We need to look at the way that black women are treated at the hands of the police and stop erasing black women's stories. At the same time, black women's sexuality has been vilified and policed for as long as Canada has had laws governing public space, and black women are still reporting often uh, that the police assume that they are prostitutes and arrest them and treat them as such. At the same time, in years of outreach work with sex workers of all races, some of the most extreme police violence I have ever seen has been leveled at black women involved in the sex industry. Including strip searches, racial slurs, and death threats uh, being leveled at black sex workers, whose blackness, whose involvement in the sex trade, and whose proximity to illicit economies means that they are hyper-marginalized and uh, profiled on the street and subject to violence by law enforcement. People often do not report, do not go to the media, and importantly are not talked about when we talk about black lives that matter and which black lives we choose to honor. Beyond straightforward physical brutality of black women, black women are also targeted by police and racial profiling as drug couriers, often charged for low-level involvement in the drug trade, for non-violent crimes, and the rate of black women incarcerated in Canada is uh, now three times higher than our rate in Canadian society. Also, most, many black women who are targeted as these drug importers are deported after they serve their sentences. There are thousands of unnamed persons caught up in the justice system right now whose lives have been altered significantly by anti-black violence, by the war on drugs, which is supposedly race neutral in Canada, but we know the arrests have largely targeted black persons. Black poverty is a form of state violence, and black women make 57 cents of what white men make, make less than white men, white women, and black men. And two-thirds of Montreal children, black children, still live in poverty today. And welfare becomes more restrictive, no matter what educational background, black persons are one of the poorest groups in Quebec. I wanted to end this on a note of love, though. Uh, love for all black lives, including those marginalized black lives who don't fit into cookie-cutter respectability pocket politics, for undocumented black lives, for transgender black lives, for black sex workers, for black drug users, for black persons involved in street-based economies, for black domestic workers, for black single mamas, and black peoples with disabilities. And most of all, I want to send love from Montreal to Toronto for standing up for all of us for the ninth straight day of a tent city. Negro spirituals to rap music, time and again, black pain and trauma has been channeled and has been, has been channeled um, into black creativity and art. So as we come to the second half, we're close to the close of this gathering. We're gonna move to having a couple of performers, a couple of people who speak, may have spoken word or songs. Um, as a celebration of black resilience. And the first person I'm gonna call up here is Shanice Nicole. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 